Hey guys, in this video, Mindset Madness, we will be presenting 10 skills that are hard to learn but will pay off forever. We all know that life is never a straight line and ups and downs are what makes it unpredictable. In most of these situations, people make decisions, some good, some bad. But it's the reality that how perfect your decision may be in life somehow manages to find and challenge us on different aspects. At these times, we remember those skills that we never paid attention to. Some of these skills are difficult to learn, but pay off forever. Before diving into the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up. Number 10, critical thinking. Your choices have an impact on your quality of life, and you'll want to make intentional choices if you want to live your greatest, most successful and joyful life. Critical thinking is a straightforward method for accomplishing this. You've probably heard of critical thinking, but you might not know exactly what it entails, owing to the fact that there are numerous definitions. Critical thinking is typically thought of as the process of assessing facts in order to make a decision. It's essentially thinking about your thought. This ability is necessary for self-reflection and justification of our lifestyles and beliefs. Critical thinking gives us the ability to assess ourselves and make decisions. Even if it is difficult, critical thinking, like any other skill, may be improved. You should identify the issue or question and be as specific as possible in your question. Then look for a variety of sources that give various views and points of view. This prevents you from establishing bias by just giving data that supports your initial viewpoint. Examine the information and sources. Examine the credibility and dependability of your information sources. Examine your data collection methods for bias. Determine the data's importance. Determine which data is most relevant to the topic at hand. You may or may not have enough relevant data to make an educated decision. You may or may not have access to sufficient relevant data to make an informed decision. Make a choice and then stick to it. This skill leads, or you can say, pave the roads for our next skill, that is, number nine decision-making. What is the meaning of life? What exactly do we do? We make decisions that are either correct or incorrect, and we must live with the consequences that come with our decisions. Essentially, decision-making skills demonstrate your ability to choose between two or more options. After you've processed all of the information accessible to you and spoken with the appropriate points of contact in a given circumstance, you'll be able to make decisions. But why is it important in the first place? A person who thinks critically about both possibilities in front of him makes a fair and just decision that will have a better life than someone who makes quick decisions without considering the implications and subsequently regrets it. These steps will help you enhance this skill. It can be beneficial to develop a strategy if you know you will have to make a decision soon. Attempt to take control of the decision-making process. Getting a second opinion might help you confirm your decisions and boost your confidence in your decision-making ability especially if you're taking guidance. Try assessing the importance of each decision and assigning deadlines to each one. Number eight, accountability. Being willing or required to accept responsibility for your actions is what accountability entails. Accepting this duty shows you recognize the importance of accountability and are committed to making a good impact. This entails taking responsibility for the decisions that led to your behavior Accountability in life leads to more than just owning up to your mistakes. While this is a widespread impression of accountability, it falls short of accurately describing its genuine meaning. In essence, it means taking full responsibility for the events that occur in your life and realizing that you are responsible for your interactions, reactions, and other things creating a sense of capability in you. Number seven, consistency. There's a popular book called Atomic Habits by James Clear that's full of wisdom and golden nuggets on how to form good habits or break bad ones. But one aspect of the book that I'd like to highlight here is the importance of consistency. Probably because we failed so many goals and quit so many times in our lives due to a lack of it. I'll give you an example. The major detriment of success or failure when trying to acquire a positive habit, such as eating a healthy diet, is consistency. We are somewhat incomplete without this talent because it allows us to embed the habit in our life and make it practically instinctual, as well as assisting us in becoming who we want to be. Setting and completing precise goals is the key to consistency. Begin by deciding how you want to be more consistent in your life and setting little goals for yourself. Keep yourself motivated and accountable over time as you become more consistent. This will assist you in staying on track and with commitment, you can reach your life's objectives. 
Number six, expressing our needs. I've met a lot of people who are dealing with this issue. They are in desperate need of assistance, yet that is not the major issue with them, is that they are unable to articulate or communicate to others that they are in desperate need of assistance or attention. And to be honest, being in a state of despair and not being able to communicate your conditions to others is pathetic. Excuse my language, but this utterly wrecks a person. To be mentally free, you must be able to express your thoughts, emotions, desires, and needs. Furthermore, because people cannot read thoughts, not stating what you want would simply make things more difficult for you. Being open and honest about your feelings will help you live a longer, more pleasant life with a stable mental state. Number five, asking for advice. This is a crucial feature that will assist you in your development. We all know that the second time we perform something, it will be more precise and good than the first since we have gained experience. However, because we have only have a short life, we can take the risk of trying everything for ourselves and sometimes big things are at stake. In these circumstances, advice is the only way out. In other words, seeking counsel entails learning from the experiences of others and then making a decision based on that knowledge. This skill can help in two ways. First, after you tell someone about your dilemma, you'll feel less burdened. And second, based on that person's experience, you'll be able to think critically and make a fair decision. Number four, accept compliments and criticism. This is a necessary skill to keep your cool and maintain your integrity. People, as we all know, enjoy being complimented and caressed, so that's not an issue. But when it comes to criticism, they can't handle it. And in exchange, most individuals struggle, become depressed, anxious, and despair, which eventually leads to suicide. Accepting criticism is an important ability to have because it will help you stay calm in subtle and difficult circumstances. And while this criticism has reached its limits these days, being able to regulate yourself by accepting and improving it is like taking the first step toward true achievement and peace. People that have this skill are frequently admired and revered in society. How can you develop the ability to accept criticism as a personality trait? First and foremost, you must stop your first reaction. Take a minute before retaliating or becoming defensive if your first impulse is to strike out at the person who is criticizing you. Take a big deep breath and consider it for a moment. Turn a bad situation into a good one. You might come upon a precious nugget, candid advice and a suggestion for improvement. Consider it an opportunity to improve. Without it, we just be sitting still. Improvement is a wonderful thing and always appreciate the person who made the comment since it will make him feel guilty for saying something that he shouldn't have spoken. Number three, negotiating. Strong negotiation abilities are necessary at every stage of life, whether you are searching for a job or already a leader at your firm. They also follow you outside of work and into your personal life. Negotiating with classmates about who will be responsible for what aspects of a collaborative project. Negotiating with a salesperson to get a better deal. As a result of this expertise, you will get your work completed according to your own terms and conditions. Another point to consider is that negotiation abilities assist in defining or demonstrating your interest and attention to the situation. You must be properly prepared, which means having a thorough understanding of the stakes and running through all possible scenarios. Before you enter a negotiation, know exactly what you're asking for, have a backup plan in place, and consider what you'd do if things went wrong. Set sensible goals, but don't be afraid to go for the stars. If you honestly believe you deserve something, ask for it and then wait. This is a difficult skill to master, but it will come in handy in your everyday life. Number two, public speaking. Even the prospect of public speaking, which is sometimes considered one of the greatest and most common fears can make your palms sweat. You become nervous and anxious and you are unable to deliver a good speech. It happens to me all the time, so I'm well aware of it. I can easily communicate with a group of people as I do every day, but when I have to do the same thing as a presentation, I am doomed. I am unable to do so. However, this can be quite embarrassing and detrimental to your career because you will be unable to transmit your message to the audience if you lack this expertise. So, what can be done to strengthen these abilities? Look, it's extremely straightforward, so let me explain it to you. Everyone has physiological reactions, such as a racing heart and shaking hands, but overcoming worry requires planning, planning, and planning some more. Consider who your message is intended for before you start writing it. Organize your materials in the most efficient way to achieve your goal. After that is completed, you must observe and respond to the feedback of others. Use humor, tell stories, and communicate well. If you include a humorous story in your presentation, 
you will undoubtedly capture your audience's attention because it contains a sense of emotional connectedness. Number one, showing gratitude. Coming to the last and most important talent, which you could call the father of them all, which is to express gratitude in life. So what exactly is gratitude? In simple terms, it is being grateful for anything you have or had in your life, in your mind, speech, and actions. It indicates that a person is happy with his life and is always grateful for it. It takes more than etiquette, good manners, or politeness to express gratitude. It's all about expressing your honest gratitude. When you thank someone, you're also demonstrating the first two aspects of gratitude. You've seen something positive and you sincerely appreciate it. Making a daily effort to embrace appreciation can be beneficial to everyone. These three steps can help you begin to appreciate and be grateful for the positive things in your life. Take note of positive things, search for them, and appreciate them. Enjoy, absorb, and pay close attention to the pleasant things in your life. Thank someone, write it down, or express your thanks to yourself. There are times when you are filled with appreciation without even realizing it. These are the times when you think to yourself, oh wow, this is incredible, or how fantastic. Pause. Take note of and savor that sensation of real thanks. Enjoy your blessings while they are still fresh in your mind. This ability leads to satisfaction and fulfillment. Well, that's it for the video. Let me know in the comments which one of these 10 skills is the most critical one so that I can feature a completely separate video addressing it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, Mindset Madness. Watch my other videos. Till next time, stay safe and keep following. See you guys in the next video. Till then, peace out.